Three, two, one. Hey folks, this is it. We're doing our first, what we think is our first robot bat test. So, uh, and by robot, we don't mean, this isn't like a sci-fi movie. This robot, we mean something that's predictable, repeatable, that's regardless of sort of human touch. Uh, the, the machine creates an impact on a bat. And so it doesn't matter how fast the kid swings it or how big or old the kid is and how strong they are or how weak they are. It really is just a performance test hard stop, right? It's not, there's no, uh, there's no perception going on here, right? And, and the way it works, and this is, how, this is how the industry does it, when you get that little certification stamp. Here's an example of one of those certification stamps. Do you notice on the USSSA, they have a new stamp, this NTS stamp, NTS tested. If you compare that to your old stamps, that NTS is actually new on there. And the reason is they actually changed the lab at where they do the USSSA testing. Now, there's been some confusion. We've got a lot of questions about uh, are old bats still legal? Yes, old bats for consumers. That, that, this isn't a consumer issue. This is a manufacturer issue. Manufacturers have to start using this new stamp and this new lab at a certain time it's already passed. So they, they have to do it there. As consumers, you don't care what the USSSA stamp. As long as it still has that 1.15 USSSA stamp, you can use a bat from 10 years ago. It's still, it still is your bat. It does not matter. You'll see that bats coming out 2021 and into the future, at least for the foreseeable future, they'll have that NTS tested little thing there. Can you see that? Hey, they get these stamps done is they do it in a ball cannon that's honestly not, not a ton different than this thing. Ours is custom made for us, but, but at the end of the day, it's the same idea where they use this cannon. You can see this cannon right here. I will use the the knob of the bat to point here. But you can see this ball cannon right here. We put a baseball, we load this thing up like a, like a real cannon. Fact, let's go over there. Let's take a look at it. This, this thing is basically a massive potato gun. I mean, it really is. It's, it uses com uh, two chambers. There's that PVC pipe, that big massive PVC pipe barrel has another PVC pipe inside of it. And the chamber that's in between those two gets pressurized. And then on the very back, there's this trigger. There's this trigger right here. The trigger actually pops out and differential and pressure goes from the outer chamber to the inner chamber and creates a pretty massive press of air. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, you will see, you can actually type in how to make a potato gun. And you'll see there's two guys out there that are like that make this baseball cannon out of a potato gun and they go to a field and they shoot it like 800 yards that's basically what we have but bigger right you also if you watch like smarter every day the guy just really recently made a cannon that shoots a baseball at like 10 billion miles an hour whatever it was that's that is this. Now that, that thing was like industrial military grade stuff. This is, this, this cannot shoot a, a ball at, at mock whatever he got that thing to, but it can get to 150, 170 miles an hour for sure. So this is how we make a, a bat review independent of like of human touch, right? This is not, this is not how good the hitter is or how good the hitter is not. This is just going to tell us how well does that barrel perform. And the way it works very simply is we load a baseball into this cannon. You actually can see the baseball is loaded right now. That's the inner chamber. The outer chamber fills up with air through this compressor. And then when it fires, it comes through this chamber and you can see it's lined up, right? We actually put a little, a laser guide. We use, we use a laser guide inside of this on the bottom of that chamber line. I wish you could see it better. See that line on the bat right there? That X where that, that, X and Y axis come together. That is exactly where that laser is. Now you'll notice this is actually a little low in the box. So if we line it up correctly, we can actually hit this bat exactly where we want. And then we can say, let's hit this bat, say six inches from the end cap. And then it comes through here, bounces off this bat right here, ball bounces back. And this is a free pivot right here. This thing is 100% free pivot. There's no, almost, I mean, virtually no friction here. And this thing bounces back, but the ball comes straight back before the, the bat actually moves. And that, again, proves this thing we've talked about, that stiffer bats have nothing to do with how, how well a ball, how hard a ball is hit. Because the, the trampoline is all in the barrel. The barrel is what creates the trampoline, and this reaction happens before the bat actually moves down here. So there's nothing about the stiffness that keeps this ball going straight. That's kind of a side note, but the point is you'll see this bat fly back, and then this ball goes back through here, and you'll see there's actually these. Six. Ready? Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. 
detect, this is the detector side, this is the emitter side. You also have them on the top and on the bottom. And so as this ball goes back through the chamber, we can measure how fast that ball crosses one of these lines because we know the diameter of the ball. We also know, and, and these laser beams are emitting like milla, milla, milliseconds. They are being, being triggered every time that thing comes across. So we know how fast it is, and we can actually project the direction of the ball in this chamber. So if it hits the bat and it sort of goes up and to the left, we can see it, and it goes directly back. We, de we generally want hits that come directly back because that gives us the best chance to see how good the actual barrel is. This here is the high-speed camera, and as we shoot that ball, we capture that. Then we can measure how fast that ball moves across the frame into that bat and then comes back. And we'll do that as well as using those lasers. Brains down here. So this is the brains of this box. And then all these emitter things come back here to this control center, which is actually up to a little computer. This is a Raspberry Pi that's allowing us to read that ball in milliseconds. So we, take, we can take the ratio of the ball coming in and going out, and as long as you know the mass moment of inertia of the bat, if you know the swing weight or it won't work, the mass moment of inertia at the point at which this rotation occurs, then you can calculate the BB core, whatever you want to call it, the BB core, the batted ball coefficient of restitution. If you can take this bat and you can move it in this pivot. So not only can we test at the six inch mark of the barrel, right? We can test it here. We can see how well the ball does here. We can see how well the ball does there and there and there, right? We can also spin the bat. We can say, okay, does it do well on one side of the bat or the other side of the bat? How well does it do? We can get multiple shots in multiple areas and we can be consistent with our speeds and we can find actually how well does this bat actually perform. So the thing we're often concerned about is accuracy, right? Especially when we start reporting data, people get mad at us for saying, all bats are kind of the same. We're like, I don't, I don't tell you. Like, this is just the data. I don't. Perception plays a huge part in how people f think a bat does well. And we, and we would, we would put our data up against anybody and say, you know what? It's honestly, it's a lot more perception than it is actual reality when it comes to exit speeds. And that's not a bad thing. It just is what it is. Now, in terms of accuracy, there, there's honestly nothing we have done, and I think the industry could do that is more accurate than this. We're down to the milliseconds. We're talking now. Whereas our things like our hit tracks and our Rapsodo and our speed guns, those are useful and helpful. But when the standard is so close, when BB core standard for every bat is, especially the top echelon of bats is so close, performance is super similar across the board. USA, USA bats are getting there. Fast pitch bats are surely there. The only real difference that we can do is really gonna be very small moments, right? But we're, we're well under a 10th of a mile an hour in terms of, in terms of uh, error. It's, it's unbelievable how accurate we can get. This data is recreatable over and over and over again, day after day. You know as well as we do. You go to a field on a certain day, and some days you're feeling good with one bat, some days you're feeling good with another. Some day the wood bat feels great or the single piece feels great, and other days it's the two piece composite. But this data allows us to capture data that works today and tomorrow, and in 10 years from now, we can get this bat and we can say, you know, the, the 2000, this is the 2021 Axe Avenge USSA. We can get the 2031 triple, you know, USSA Axe Avenge and we'll be able to say, hey, was this bat as good as that bat? We'll be able to do that because we're recreating, we're recreating this every time. And we just think that is super exciting. This has been, uh, for us, this has been a very long time coming. We've been working, trying to get one of these things for a long time. So for fun today, just to kind of give you a taste of it, we're gonna show you some high-speed shots. We're gonna compare the 2021 Axe Avenge with that 2021 USSA Cat Connect. They're both 3020s, have big barrels, they both feel light, they have about the same swing weight, and it'll be super fun to get some high-speed cameras. And we have it hitting in the same spot every time, but sometimes it's a little up and down just to do some variance in it. And sometimes if you're up just like a quarter of an inch, you'll see that the ball kind of shoots off to the top, doesn't come back to the laser, so you gotta redo it, which is perfectly reasonable and kind of industry standard. That's sort of, you have to get that ball to come straight back, or it doesn't really make much sense because we're not trying to get the exit speed of deflected hits. We're trying to get of just solid, on the middle of the barrel hits. And that's what we'll do. Give a little comparison and see which barrel we're so excited for the first time uh, to see actually which bat's barrel does better for realsy. No, no caveats, no asterisks, no like, uh, kinda, we think we're kind of right. No, like we're right. 
this is what we're doing. I want to show you this too because I think it's super cool. So this is gate 65. So remember, there were, there were four there are four gates over there, right? We have four gates, and by gates we mean those laser gates. So there's four sets of gates. So there's really eight of those bars, but there's four gates. Gate 65 is the last one here. I'll show you. Gate 65 is this one here. This one going up and down. So every time a ball cross this moment right here, up and down, every time you know that 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 beam right there got broke in that millisecond it turned that number, it's binary, so it turned it from a zero to a one, saying, hey, this is being hit. Some, something is in the way of this right here. And look, during that last shot that we did that you, you haven't seen yet, this is what it's saying. This is the inbound right here. So at time 0.142868 is when the ball crossed, right? And then the ball left at 0.146314, meaning it traveled between three and two and seven eighths inches, because that's how, that's the diameter of the baseball in that amount of time. That's when it went through the third gate. This is when it came back through the gate. So this here is when it came back through that gate. See, and it's not, it doesn't read when stuff isn't happening. So you'll see a gap in time right here, but it's 2.43478 seconds is when it started coming back through. And when it, uh, then it finished at about 2.5855. Notice just the shape of the ball, right? So this is sort of the shape of how fast it goes through. It's definitely slower coming back through. The bat, the bat is set, the ball is in, everything looks great. The control booth here, but you feel, and you know, you actually can fill this thing up. 35 PSI, and you can hear it, you know, setting itself here. We have a man on the camera over there. Uh, compressor goes off. We hit this, it takes about a second to fire. So I'm gonna move quick when I fire and you'll see it. Boom. Look, it's coming. Ooh, hey, you guys see that? So that the, ball, the ball went up. So terrible hit, right? So ball went up. Could we just change the speed a little bit? So we gotta readjust that. Or maybe. We're there. Ready to fire? Yep. Fire in the hole. Yeah, that's a good one. Not too bad. So it comes pretty close to coming straight back. Definitely a little bit low, but probably within that five degree window right there. Um, it definitely hits all lasers too, all laser gates before it hits anything else. But that's, that's really what we're going for right there. Okay, so we've finished with our Marucci Cat Connect a million times. What's crazy about the ax, right, is that really there's only one side of the barrel you wanna test, right? Now, with this one-sided hitting, right, because we're always hitting this bat like this, we really only have to test one side of the barrel. And that's, that's Axe's story, right? That's always been Axe's story, is, is that they only really have to make one side of the barrel very good. The other side isn't even really hittable. This side is what they have to do. I um, add some durability to the bat and usefulness. So, all right, so we're gonna pop this bad boy in there. This, so it's all about where this bat pivots around here. So this here actually is gonna pivot at the zero, right? It actually pivots right there. Sometimes just based on where you wanna put the bat, the bat might be over that different clamp. So the, the calculation's a little bit different. So it's not as easy as just saying, well, how far fast does this ball pop off versus how fast did that Marucci one pop off? It actually, ready? Right yep. there? Yep. Three, two, one. Three, 
these bats are so light that when the ball, the ball just sort of blows through them, it's a lot easier to do BB core bats on this or heavier bats or drop eights or drop fives or really try to hit towards the end cap. But, but in any event, we got, some, we got some decent data and let's go analyze it and see which bat has the better barrel. So this could be super complicated. I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible. But basically we can, we can take this file, this, this slow motion stuff and we can put it inside of this. And if you've watched our channel, you've seen us do this before. But really, we can watch this ball, and because we know the frame rate, we can mark certain frames, and we can see how far it travels. We know we know the diameter of the baseball. We can calibrate it to some things on here, like we know how wide this is. We know how wide the baseball is. And we basically can say, okay, if it goes so far in so many frames, that means it's going so much. So we can get the inbound speed, which is, you know, here. If I were to play this about here, right there, this is the inbound speed. So we can get the inbound speed, which this is against the cat. A, this was about 81 miles an hour or so, and then it bounced off, and it came back at about 16 miles an hour. But again, the actual BB core calculation is more than just inbound, outbound. It actually matters a lot in terms of what, how much the bat weighs, where you hit it on the bat, where the pivot point was, the mass moment of inertia, all those kinds of things. And there's a pretty significant calculation. You have to put it in. But once you get those numbers, you can actually take it over to a calculation like that. And I've done that. Um, and I will, not, uh, I will not bore you with all of the details there, but if you come here, uh, here's an Alan Nathan article if you ever really want to get into this and see how you calculate this kind of stuff, but how you can equate BPF to BB core and all that kind of fun stuff. Caveat we have to tell you before we, before we show you the numbers, although we're showing them to you right here, is that there is a calibration process you go to actually do the actual BB core standard. We do not do that. This is sort of our own BB core. This, the calibration you actually work with WSU, but we, we haven't done that because we're not interested in certifying bats. We're just interested in comparing them to each other. There's a bunch of the data. Remember, MOI, don't get too confused. This is about where it rotated, not the MOI of the bat. It's about where it rotated. So those numbers aren't equatable because they rotated around different spots just based on how we had them in the pivot, different balance points, all that kind of fun stuff. But here you go. We found that we're, we're going to call it the Bat Digest Core. Uh, it's 5.30659 and on the um, Marucci Cat 9, it was 0.5333, whatever. You can read that, meaning the Bat Digest core for the Marucci Cat 9 was a little bit higher. Now, tons of caveats here, okay? this is we, we just took one really good hit. In truth, when we do this on our site and when they do it for real certification, they do multiple hits, like six to eight really good hits. So we would like to see that. This is just on one spot of the barrel. But super, super fascinating how close these things are in terms of their, and now they're over 0.5, because the, remember, these are U-triple-S-A bats. We would usually like to see, we think if we could hit it more directly on that, and we're going a little bit faster too, right? So we're going like 80 and 92 miles an hour, but ultimately we equate to these numbers, which is really fun. So in this particular hit, on this particular ball, with this particular spot of the bat, the, the Cat9 did a little bit better. And by a little bit, I mean, I'm not kidding, a little bit, right? We're talking 0 0.003 better about, which is, which is minuscule, minuscule stuff. In any event, that's pretty fun to look at. And that is what we're doing here and trying to make science a part of this so we can actually have real numbers and look at real data that really shows us how well these barrels perform independent of players, independent how good the hitter is. It just isolates barrel performance and gives us a number and we think that is awesome. We hope you do too.